All right, so let's take a look at what I did and why this took so long to edit. That shot I took separate from the day that we went to film. Uh, so the script, I hold the whole script I wrote within a day, and it was because of this necessity I had to film something. I just started. I just stopped filming the horror short film, and that took a lot. But I, I wanted to get back there and film something, so I just made this script within a day based off the premise that it would be funny if two guys were at a diner and for some reason they spilled a secret that one of them had fucked the other one's sister and a gun was pulled under the table. Uh, so I just wrote a whole script based off that. But what I did first was I found the actors before I had the script. So I forced myself to write it <laughs> in a sense. So what I told them was I already had the script done. I would just need to uh, write it. Uh, but this was filmed at Mr. Perry's about two miles from my grandma's house. And uh, so I know th I know those places very well. I was looking for a diner to film this, and that place turned out to be perfect. The reason it was also tricky going into editing was because when we were there, there were other – the restaurant was open. It's not as if we were before hours or after hours. The restaurant was open. There were people sitting around us. And also it doesn't help that we were like right next to the kitchen. So we would hear uh, dishes, uh, the kitchen going, the manager speaking loudly, other people's tables, uh, people being sat. There was just a bunch of background noise, so it was hard to – even though the camera was – even though the camera and the audio was focused directly on either one of the actors, it would still pick up so much from the background. So, so uh, going into the editing, I realized that, okay, I'm going to have to bump up the audio, but at the same time – there's other aspects that will be bumped out as well from the background. But I think it adds to the movie, actually. Because the characters don't stand out above the crowd. They're not over-the-top characters. They're, in fact, they could easily blend in with any other conversation going on in that diner. I think that adds to their... They're not significant over their environment. And that's what I wanted when writing the script. I wanted just two guys sitting there. They know each other very well. And I wanted them to just speak as if they've been friends for a very long time. And no matter what any of them could say, the other one's buttons would not be pushed. This is also the only film up to this point where I have ever called a deliberate rehearsal before the fact of shooting. And I made a point to. Because with comedies... I scripted it, of course, but with comedies, if there's going to be a punchline at all, it's going to have to be improv, at least in my opinion. If you script comedies, it's just, it comes off as cartoonish, and it comes off as like old school Hollywood comedies, like screwball comedies, where the, even though they're, they're scripted, they're funny, but nothing better than a good improv where the emotions are uh, natural, the insults are natural. And it's just it's more biting and enticing to see such a raw uh, filter of someone's mouth. So what I did was I had the story all outlined, and what I told these guys was improv it. So I mean, a good chunk of this this movie is improv, and it shows because I mean, it's <laughs> these guys are after meeting these guys. These guys are like their parts. Uh, not to cause them too much disrespect, but they are very similar to the characters I uh, mapped out, uh, at least in some regard. So what was also very time-consuming for this edit, okay, so there's the sound where all the sound's coming in from different sources. Then there was the actual camera. So I, I, I used a new tripod for this one. And that they came in handy, but the actual camera had a dead pixel in it. And a dead pixel, if you don't know, is uh, it's it's basically if you use your camera so much, a pixel goes either red, black, or green, just one pixel. And but even though it's small, it distracts from the whole the whole shot. And so in every single one of my shots, I get home, I'm in the editing room, and I see that in every single one of my shots, there's a red dot that stays in the same place no matter where the actors are. Uh, it doesn't matter because wherever my camera moves, the pixel goes. 
and it's been in a few other of my shorts and it's very it's it bothered me a lot and it's something i wanted to fix for this one but on the spot i couldn't fix it so when i got to the editing room i i thought you know what i can't put this out it's, it's too distracting from the actual shots so i'm gonna have to fix it so what i did was i superimposed two images and i had to draw a mask which is basically cut out uh, a small chunk of the actual moving image and superimpose it onto the red dot so what you see in every single one of the shots is uh, actually made out of two shots and if if you want like uh uh a description of what that kind of is it's like a stencil so i kind of stenciled uh the same shot and used a separate chunk of color over the red dot and it sounds confusing I don't know if anyone gives a shit, but that's what I had to do, and that's why it took so long. If you're interested in the editing, that's that's how you get rid of a dead pixel. And also, it wasn't incredibly dark the times we were filming, but for some reason I got there and my camera was just so dark. I mean, it was about seven, seven, eight o'clock. It wasn't it wasn't like pitch black as it looks in the movie, but oh, overall I had a lot of fun making it. And if, if you liked it, big thumbs up to you. Thanks for watching it anyway. Uh, if, you're, if you're thinking about making a movie but you don't know how or you don't know what about or you don't know if it's going to be good enough, I'm just going to tell you right now. Go ahead and make it.